college basketball here in the second week of March, now around the association to the NBA we go live right here on this Wednesday morning on the morning after on Sports Grid. Zach Weiss is back with us here on TMA, the host of the Across the Cavs podcast on the Basketball Podcast Network to go all around the association. A look back on a Tuesday night slate and sledding up and setting up the Wednesday night action as well. Zach, thank you so much for joining us here on the morning after on this Wednesday. Yeah, Ben, great to be back. We got a lot to talk about. The NBA in a very exciting place. You got stars everywhere. The Cavs are looking good. And the competition in both conferences is really starting to pick up. And that really is the focus right here. Playoff positioning in both conferences. Teams even trying to have an opportunity at the postseason like a play-in tournament position. That's the Lakers' focus right now in Los Angeles. A ceremonious night yesterday inside the Crypto.com Arena as Pal Gasol had his number 16 jersey hung up in the rafters next to his longtime friend, Kobe Bryant. An emotional night in Los Angeles for Pal Gasol, and that was evident in the Lakers' performance. Undermanned without LeBron James, of course, going up against the Memphis Grizzlies in their second game now without Ja Morant since the organization and Ja himself announced he would be taking some time away from basketball. 112-103 last night in favor of L.A., who actually ended Zach as a slight one and a half point home underdog. And Anthony Davis was sensational. 30 points, 22 rebounds. Zach, what was your main takeaway from the Lakers' win last night over the Grizz? Yeah, AD is back, Ben. For all the flack he gets, oh, AD's washed. AD's done 30 points, 22 rebounds. Obviously, Memphis is missing John Morant. Memphis is very much missing Steven Adams, but it's pretty clear that Jaron Jackson is their only serious playmaker right now. Without Ja Morant to facilitate, Desmond Bain went 3 of 14, didn't knock in a single three-pointer. It's very clear this team is in trouble. The Kings are catching up. The Suns are catching up. I think Memphis is in danger, and the Lakers are finally a top-10 team. And if LeBron does come back, I can't wait to see what the Lakers can do if they get into the postseason. A big result because of that playoff positioning last night. Zach, like you mentioned, the Lakers now vaulting both the Pelicans and the Thunder. L.A. has the ninth best mark in the Western Conference at this moment. If the season were to end today, of course, we still have 15 to 17 more games of this regular season. The Lakers would be in the Western Conference play-in tournament. And because of the loss for Memphis... They drop back now into a tie for second in the Western Conference alongside Sacramento, but both the Kings and the Grizz now seven and a half games behind the Denver Nuggets who continue to occupy that top spot in the Western Conference. Zach, knowing how jumbled the Western Conference standings have been really the entirety of this regular season, how much do you expect things to change in terms of that playoff positioning by the time we get to the end of the regular season? Yeah, so I expect the Kings can very much be a player for that number two seed. I think they've got the best one-two punch, arguably, in the conference going right now with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. you got a 6'11 playmaker. you got yourself a 6'4 guard that leads the NBA in clutch scoring. I think Memphis is going to drop. I think Phoenix is going to play their way into a top three. And, man, the first-round matchups we can get between the Suns, the Mavericks, and the Warriors. Just think about the conference mm. finals of the last two years and it could just be so exciting. Luca versus Steph. You got Clay and Booker. KD versus Curry. Whoever Sacramento plays in the first round, though, it is going to be insane because you have the Kings, Ben. They're going to end a 16-year playoff drought. But they're going to be playing a team that was probably in the draw last year. So there is just so many question marks. I think the one thing we can agree on is that Denver will lock in as the one seed. The rest is up for grabs. You can see what the odds have to say about the true evaluation of teams once they reach the postseason. The Kings, despite potentially hosting a playoff series as the two seed in the West, still 46 to one to win that Western Conference crown. And despite the slide for the Grizzlies and the Mavericks and the fact the Dubs are in that sixth spot, only a half game in front of the Minnesota Timberwolves, they are six to one to win the Western Conference. Conference. Speaking of Minnesota, it was Joel Embiid without James Harden by his side going on the road for the Sixers last night and getting more than a 20 point victory. In fact, 23 points as Philly wins 117 94. No James Harden, Zach, but no issue for Joel Embiid. 39 points for JoJo as Philly wins outright as a three point road underdog. 
How do you perceive Philadelphia in the overall scope of the NBA, Zach? How are they in terms of contending for an Eastern Conference championship and maybe an NBA championship in your mind? Yeah, they're definitely a top five team. The only team you could argue that's definitely better with teams, I should say, would be Denver, Boston, and Milwaukee. They got the fourth best record. They're right up there. They got Joel. And with Harden out, look at Tyrese Maxey, Ben. He slid into the starting lineup again last week. Thank goodness Doc hasn't gone back to Melton. A good player, but he's no Tyrese Maxey. Let's not forget how good Tyrese is as a, as a ball player. And with Harden out, all they pretty much did was they ran sets through both uh, Maxey and MB. They ran the offense fine, but... I'm scared for Minnesota right now. Rudy Gobert against Embiid, six points, nine rebounds. That's not what you want. Yes, Cat's out, but Minnesota's beaten good opponents throughout the season with him on the sideline. As great as this is for Philadelphia, I'm equally concerned for Minnesota that nobody cares as much as Anthony Edwards does about winning over there right now. The Wolves just a game above 500, and Anthony Edwards said last night that Joel Embiid certainly in consideration for the NBA MVP. Now, Zach, at the end of last year, there were some people that thought JoJo was deserving of that Most Valuable Player award instead of Nikola Jokic, but the Joker won his second straight. Nikola Jokic is an odds-on favorite to win his third consecutive NBA MVP, and unlike last year, his Nuggets sit atop the Western Conference. But you can see what Embiid has done this year. His stats better, at least in terms of points per game, nearly leading the association at this point. Is there anything, Zach, in your mind that Joel Embiid can do to take the NBA MVP award away from Nikola Jokic? Yeah, maybe part of why Nikola Jokic sells so well is we don't know anything about his life off the court. If Joel Embiid goes dark on social, maybe starts doing press conferences in Serbian, maybe then he'll have an actual chance. But on an actual numerical side, he's only gotten better, 33-10. and 10. The only argument I could see <clears throat> from – Voters, is that maybe they think his style of play, the way that he gets a lot of points at the foul line, which might have been an argument against Harden for a couple of years before he finally got his win, could get in the mix. But, I mean, 43-22, and 22, just like the Nuggets, Ben, the Sixers are nearly unstoppable at home. I believe they only have seven home losses to Denver's four. So he's putting up numbers. Maybe just play more games. He did miss 14 last season. Jokic only missed five, I believe, in comparison. So mm. just – be on the court for 100% of the games. I mean, it's going to be close, but I think people are writing off Embiid and favoring Jokic a little too early because we've still got five weeks left until regular season comes to an end. The market did move a tad in favor of JoJo after last night's 39-point performance on the road in Minnesota. He is now 5-1, to one, still the second-best price to win that MVP award. Nikola Jokic still a heavy odds-on favorite at minus 340. The Sixers own that three spot in the Eastern Conference right now, Zach. Milwaukee won their 18th game in their last 19 tries last night on the road without Giannis in Orlando against the Magic. They now hold, Zach, a two-and-a-half game lead in front of those Boston Celtics. And when you look at the Eastern Conference odds, the C is still a slight favorite, 15 cents in front of of the Bucks, Zach, 15 games or so to end out this NBA regular season. When all is said and done with the playoffs on the horizon, who do you think will close as the favorite to win the Eastern Conference Championship? I think it's got to be the Bucks, Ben. And I know we got a lot of Celtic fans out here. They've been fantastic all season. Look at who the Bucks have picked up. They just added Goran Dragic. They brought in Jay Crowder. They brought in Myers Leonard just to add an extra big if Bobby Portis should go down again. Portis could win sixth man of the year this season. He's certainly in that conversation with Emmanuel quickly, among others. Brooke Lopez blocks three shots a game and makes threes at a crazy rate for a seven-foot-one big man. That's why they call him Splash Mountain. They had two all-stars on the roster. We're not considering that Chris Middleton's been playing limited minutes when he's been in, and yet they're still 18-1 and one in this stretch. They could go 11 or 12 deep in the playoffs, which is unheard of. That's the kind of depth they have, while Boston, Ben, keeps shuffling Horford, Horford and Williams keep coming in and out. Tatum's missing games here and there. I think Boston still needs to figure out a firmly set rotation. Can Grant Williams still play big minutes after what happened the other night? The Bucs don't have these issues, and I think the Sixers won't be able to catch up to Milwaukee with this much time left. The nine-game win streak for the New York Knicks comes to a close last night, rather surprisingly, against the Charlotte Hornets. So the Knicks, who have the fifth-best price, still sit in that number five spot in the Eastern Conference standings. Now, a full two games, Zach, behind the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are in that fourth spot out 
East. Tonight on the road in South Beach for the Cavs, a two-point road favorite against Miami. Zach, over this stretch run to end out the NBA regular season, what do you want to see out of Cleveland that will show you they are ready to take that leap into the playoffs? I just want to see them stay healthy. With the current lineup they have, the starting five is fine. Garland, Nakora, Mobley, Allen, and Spida, Donovan Mitchell. I just want to see them solidify the bench rotation because the reason they beat the Celtics in such a, a highly watched game and why it's so important, Lamar Stevens, Penn State legend, sits for the first three quarters, then does not come out of the game once he enters. Six offensive rebounds in 17 minutes, made a couple of huge shots. Their bench has been abysmal. Karis LeVert's averaging four points over the last month. Dean Wade's averaging two. They got rid of Kevin Love, yep. who they might see tonight because they thought Dean Wade could take that step. They're not playing Danny Green. Ricky Rubio got seven minutes last game. It's all about the bench. Who can step up? You know, the reason that those great Boston teams and those, those Heat teams with the big 3-1 are because of the unsung heroes. The Cavs don't have a consistent unsung hero. So whose praises will we be heaping in those big games? Outside the starting lineup, Ben, if somebody can step up and prove that they can be the sixth and seventh man, I see no reason they can't get to the second, third, and heck, maybe even the finals. The Cavaliers last week played two games against the Celtics. They split the results, but Donovan Mitchell scored 40 in each of them. Tonight against the Miami Heat, 26 and a half is that points prop for Spida. Elsewhere around the NBA, talking about those Boston Celtics, now Zach on a three-game slide, and like we mentioned, two and a half games back of Milwaukee for that top spot. The Celtics hosting the Portland Trailblazers, a double-digit favorite laying 10 inside TD Garden. Zach, is there any real concern for you as you evaluate Boston and obviously their overall goals of winning an Eastern Conference title and playing in the NBA Finals for a second straight year? I see no reason that they, they don't have a fair chance to get there. Now, will they actually put it together is uh, another topic of conversation. They should be fine tonight. They're playing a Portland team that's beaten a couple of weaker opponents in, in close games uh, over the course of the week. They got past Detroit. They got past Orlando. Maybe they'll have some road fatigue, but you can't sleep on Damian Lillard, Dane time. Boston should be fine. Ben, they just need to get a consistent they need Horford, Williams, Tatum, Brown, and Smart to be starting together. Once they have that, we know they're not going to lose. That's why they've been losing. Rob's been out again. We'll be just fine. Yeah, I think they will be fine as well. Two and a half games back again of Milwaukee. Speaking of teams returning home, Kevin Durant makes his debut in Phoenix for the Suns tonight. In his first three games for Phoenix on the road, they are a perfect 3-0. and And Zach, you can see what the odds say about his home debut in the Valley this evening, Kevin Durant and his sons now a 13-and-a-half point favorite against the Thunder. He is Zach Weiss, the host of the Across the Cavs podcast on the Basketball Podcast Network, but sharing the insight all around the association on this Wednesday on TMA. Zach, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Ben, and watch for the Suns to cover. No J. Will, no Shea. Eddie's going to dominate. Ooh, even a 13-and-a-half point spread. Zach, I like the look. We round out the opening hour next. 